Hey guys, my name is Ismael Trevino and this is the Millennial Way Show. Thank you very much for being with us. We're still uh, covering this amazing Web Summit 2018 and today we have a very special guest. We've been trying to look for her, uh, well actually for a few months ago. Finally, we have the pleasure to have Dima Hatib. But thank you very much Dima for being with us. I'm happy to be here. For the, for the people that do know, uh, know the, the, the background of Dima, well, she's actually the managing director of AG Plus, uh, the award-winning uh, digital and new service in English, Arabic, French, and Spanish, launched by Al Jazeera. Uh, she's currently the only female executive director within the Al Jazeera group and one of the few female leaders in the Arab media sphere. She has worked in journalism over 35 countries and I don't know how, but she speaks <laughs> more eight, eight languages, right? Yes. Eight languages. Which one? Oh, that's a secret. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll see. Maybe I'm learning a ninth one. Jesus, yeah, okay. I'm learning Kiswahili. Swahili. Kiswahili. Yeah, Africa. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Dima, thank you very much for being with us. I'm happy to be here. AJ Plus, 9 million followers uh, in the English version, more, uh, more than 4 million followers in uh, the Spanish version. Uh, 11 million. 11 million. In English. Uh, that's correct, yeah. I'm sorry. We jumped. You jumped <laughs> because of the summit. No. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, but we are 11 million, right? Yeah. And and six million in the in the in the, in the Arabic in the Arabic and one. Uh, Arabic is seven million. Seven million. Yes, and Espanol is I don't know maybe five million. French is new, and that's on Facebook. But we also have YouTube. We have uh, many YouTube verticals. One of them in Arabic has almost two million. Uh, we reached one million in less than a year, for example, on you, YouTube. Which you guys is are huge. you guys are We're revolutionizing <laughs> this uh, digital journalism world. How how you, how you do it? By doing journalism and using the best that technology offers in communication, um, putting real content with value, using the journalism and the know-how we have in Al Jazeera, but being cool, eclectic, and very creative, and giving space for creativity, and building this with the audiences, uh, taking it from within, not from without or from above, from below. So we're very close to our audiences we listen to them we build this with them they pitch to us we tell the stories that matter to our audience they are our priority it's not power it's the people because we are those people let's talk about uh, current affairs uh, fake news this uh, fake yeah. news world phenomenon what's your take on that well they should not be called news if they're fake right because that's not real news so of course uh, it's, it's a problem it's a big problem because anybody can post anything anytime but the good news is we are here the journalists and this is our main mission in life make sure that the content is verified is sourced and make sure that we actually educate people about how to verify themselves so when you get a chain on on whatsapp we can teach you the, the tools the same tools used by people who make up the stuff can be used by the users to verify that stuff so we launched something called verificado dos mil in Mexico during the Mexican uh, elections. We teamed up with almost 90 organizations across Mexico, uh, civil society and universities and media organizations and the best investigative journalists in Mexico. And we verified every single day everything related to the elections. Why did we do it? Because there were 14 million new voters in Mexico between 18 and 24, which is our target audience. Mm -hmm. And we thought they have the right to be well informed. I covered Mexican elections twice before and I know the amount of disinformation and misinformation that circulates it's huge in Mexico it's, it's the same in all of Latin America but Mexico is bigger so and, and the stakes are higher because it's closer to the United States so it's it's really huge uh, so I thought why don't we try and give people more than just information verify the information help them make a conscious decision when they go to vote and it went really well we won an online journalism award word for it in Texas uh, and we're thinking of duplicating that so um, one of my colleagues is in India right now to see if we can do this in India for the biggest elections ever the biggest democracy in the world Wow fascinating fascinating Dima uh, let's talk about a little bit about uh, the the reason of why you're here at the summit and uh, the different panels that you were participating in. I understand that you your talks are uh, we're talking about the social change journalism uh, digital campaign and pro 
pro-life societies. Um, please tell us a little bit about it. Well, we discussed how polarization kills the truth sometimes if the journalists fall into the trap of polarization. And it's very easy. I've seen this in Venezuela, I've seen this in Peru, in Ecuador, even in Colombia. I've seen this before the Arab world. I know the, the, this disease of polarization, what it does to journalists. When their own media organizations fall into the polarization, and we are they are sometimes victims in their personal life of this polarization, or because of their journalistic work. So that's very dangerous, because when you're polarized, you only see one side, and you you you, you live in this like kind of, uh, you negate, you're in denial about mm -hmm. the existence mm -hmm. of the other, and that's very bad, because you know, the thing about fake news and polarization is that people believe what is most convenient to them, what they like. Oh, they like Chavez, they will believe anything crazy, good about yeah. Chavez. They hate Chavez, they will believe anything bad about Chavez, and they forget about the truth. The truth is, is never that, or this, it's actually somewhere in the middle. So polarization is very, very serious uh, issue, um, and I hope journalists uh, find a way to keep the journalism in them, working and functioning under polarization to huge responsibility. We talked about this yesterday. We also talked, I talked in, um, in my keynote speech, I talked about building trust online. Correct. So, uh, it's not just verification, it's also how you diversify. Diversification is very important in today's world because our audience is diversified. It's not television like I used so to So diversify like in different platforms, the, the, your stories, how you, how you diversify? Our teams should be diversified, right? Oh. These should reflect the diversity of society. How can I reach out to you, a Colombian, if I don't have someone on my team who thinks like you? So how diversity is? Diversity is when I hire people, I make sure I have a diverse uh, artist's room, creative department, even the, the data people, and of course the journalists. I have to have the diversity in my newsroom uh, if I want to reach out to a diverse society. So inclusiveness needs to start in your own newsroom. Yeah. The discussions that you want to stir online, they need to be able to take place in your newsroom or in your creative room before you go online. Otherwise, you will not make it to that diverse world. You will only make it to a fraction of that diverse world and then you will not diverse anymore. So inclusiveness is part of our success. And uh, sorry, I also I also talked about um, uh, trust, uh, audience, being close to the audience and having impact on their real life. Micro impact rather than macro impact. We don't like power. We like the people. And we empower them to information but also to telling their story which might change their life. You mentioned um, that one of your interests is of course in, in recruiting people and, and to talk about the jobs, the jobs of the future. How do you see the role of, uh, of today journalists that they need to adapt to these new technologies? Uh, Sometimes they, they in the like uh, old days, back in the old days, there were just one assignment, they know how yeah. to do one thing, but today with all this explosion of digital world, well, yeah. you have to mutate. Yeah, you, you have to multitask, know how to do several things at the same time. I think journalists, some journalists have a huge challenge ahead if they want to survive. They need to innovate their own way of practicing journalism. They cannot be, otherwise they'll be left behind, just like everything else in life, like industries, entire industries disappear, you know? Journalism will not disappear. I'm not worried about that. But if you do not innovate and learn how to use technology to your favor, to tell more stories, to reach more audiences, then you would become like a dinosaur in journalism. You'll, you'll stay in a one-way street. You know, the way like I used to do it when I was on TV, like, here I am, I am in Bogota, and this is what's happening. I have no idea what people are thinking when they, after they listen to what I said. I just go to sleep. It's the end. It's the death of what I just said. Whereas online, and that's the way with everything we do today, it's the birth of it. There's a whole life after you post it with the people. So journalists need to adapt to this reality. And actually, it's great. It's fantastic. Imagine I can find out who is following, who is engaging, how many women, how many men. And we have we have reached, thanks to the diversity we have, we've reached a, a ratio of female male that is higher than most of our competitors, if not all, where we have more female engagement than male, despite, despite the male bashing that usually takes place and they, they eat women alive when they like comment something about women. 
that does not happen on our on our feed as much as it happens on other competitors because of the diversity we have in the newsroom. We have 53% women, and that's not a quota. That's us, like naturally growing like that. Maybe because a female leader is there, and you know, women feel more comfortable that they can grow, they can flourish without any sexual harassment, sexual favors, prejudices, and stuff like that. So, it's it, it, that the opportunity to do great things with your journalism today, I think, is bigger than ever before. We have so many more tools than ever before. And uh, today, um, my last talk will be about management and leadership. Mm -hmm. And um, this is also another another thing. I think as journalists, I'm a journalist originally, I'm not a manager. But I use so many of my journalistic tools in communication to be a manager. And how like I immerse in management, just like I immerse in a story, just like when I go to any country, I immerse in that culture or language, I do the same thing in management. I'll be talking about that today. Fascinating. You just mentioned the, the, the role of the, of the journalist adapting to this new world technology, mm -hmm. but what about the role of the mainstream media that is kind of trying to adapt him, but the same way, like they, they see this social world, this social media world as a, as a second Enemy? and something. <laughs> yeah, like, like ah, we're, not, we're not taking care of serious this, but they're not like going like well, uh, advancing on it. This is your opportunity if you are mainstream media to catch up. It's already late, <laughs> but you know if you start running now while we are still walking, you may catch up. There's no, there's no, it's not an option anymore. And, and if you see innovation as your enemy, then you are a dinosaur. You're already a stone. You know, you need to like put your wings out and fly and try new things. We try new things all the time. We fall. We, we we fail we try again and we learn every every day we have data it's a, it's a fantastic tool to learn and grow and do what you want to do using the best that technology offers you Dima what, last question um, and thank you very much for your time which one will be your best advice to the new generation of journalists to innovate and adapt to the new digital challenges if you can tell them right there to all our audience that is watching you right now well everybody has something special to say. I'm sure you have a message, you have something special about you. So choose the platform and the format that you think would help you reach those people that will understand your message and that will benefit the most out of your message and will spread your message. How you do that? By just mere research. Okay, you want to talk to people in Nigeria. Find out if the people that you want are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Snapchat. It's not a very difficult task and look for formats and choose the format that you think would best suit your message I'm sure you'll make it it just takes a little bit more research good luck well guys you have it there the one and only Dima Hatib director uh, managing director for AJ plus here with us on the Millennial Way show Dima a pleasure to have you with us thank you very much for your time pleasure talking to you thank you